And the reason some people think, well, I don't know, I remember that economy when he first came in being pretty good. Yeah, it was pretty good because it was my economy. The economy has a lag effect, right? There's, there's an administrative lag effect in politics. When one administration comes in and start passing laws, right? Most of the time, the laws don't even go in effect for anywhere from two to four years. Sometimes they're not even in office anymore when a law goes into effect. A lot of times what you are seeing are, are residual laws from the previous administration. So when I hear all you brothers talking about, well, all I knew when Trump was in office, I had money, I had a job, which it didn't. The economy has been going down with steadily, man, for the last 50 years. So you're lying about that. You're being dishonest about that. And the truth of the matter is the economy wasn't good under Obama. The economy has been downsliding steadily since Ronald Reagan turned everything around and repealed all of the safeguards that made everything more equitable in society. And once Ronald Reagan did it, Bill Clinton doubled down on it, you know, the Bushes doubled down on it. It's been going the same direction no matter who's been in office. So I don't really know what Obama's talking about either because the economy was not great. But this is something y'all say. Y'all always want to give Trump credit for a great economy, but it wasn't Trump's economy. And now we got black men that have that have uh, relinquished their energy to kowtow and bow down to the bullying of racists. Man, it's, it's weird, bro. And then these dudes talk tough. That's the crazy thing. You get these Republican, Republican type brothers and they talk the toughest, bro. Man, if y'all don't go sit down somewhere with that weak stuff, man, because there ain't nothing strong about voting for a man that you know damn well if he was black, you wouldn't even want him around you. Ain't nothing strong about that, bro. That's weakness, man. That's the same thing as you being in an environment. They got some bully around, you know what I'm saying? That's that's rah rah and woo woo woo, and, and and you do what you gotta do to become his buddy. See, I've never been that kind of dude. You can ask anybody that been in lockup with me, man, or, or on the streets with me, bro. Look, I never capitulated, you know, to the energy of a bully. I fought them. I stood up to them. If a dude thought that he was bout it, bout it, rowdy, rowdy, man, and he out there, you know what I'm saying, talk about what he gonna do and, you know, this and that, he better leave me alone. The second he even looked wrong at me, that jammy was coming out, bro. I was letting that thing, I wasn't playing with nobody like that, but look, you ain't about to, you ain't about to punk me out, bro. And what Trump and the Republicans are doing is punking y'all out, bro. These people are not your friends. I get it, the other side ain't either. <laughs> I get it. The other side are not your friends either, but the other side are not your open enemies. These people are not just not your friends. They are your open enemies. I don't really care about the people that don't care about me, but you can't help but to care about the people that hate you. And you are, you are, you are lying to yourself as a black person if you are telling yourself that those people on the other side do not hate you. I've given y'all my personal stories here on YouTube. I told you a story about how me and a friend, we both felt we were both 14 years old, got jumped by a gang of what you would call grown white men. It's like, I mean, it was buku of them, like 15 of them, you know, at least. And we two 14 year old so-called boys, you know what I'm saying? We didn't really see ourselves as boys, but you know, we two so-called 14 year old boys fighting what you would call grown men. You know what I'm saying? That we had done nothing to. Just the mere presence of us being in their environment was enough to, to make them so angry that they wanted to take us off the earth. And they tried. I've had personal experience with racist police. I've had personal experience with, I mean, come on, man. I, I, I ain't the only one, bro. I ain't the only one. Y'all y'all know them people don't like us, man. I don't know why y'all pretending like they do. You know, and then when y'all, when something happened to you or somebody in your family, then you want to cry about it, you know what I'm saying? But y'all can't cry about it, bro. Because you don't understand that, you know, being around them people is way more dangerous than being around your own black people. Way more dangerous, bro. You, you, you couldn't give me a free house around them rednecks. I wouldn't take it. Because I'm not going to be in that kind of environment, man. You're not going to have me out here like a, like a deer head first, bro. That's why we always lived among ourselves because it's safer for us to live among ourselves. 
But do you know what the main goal of most black Americans is today? To get away from black people. They got us, bro. They got us. I mean, they got us. They, they, they didn't twist us all up. And for the most part, I understand that. I have a deeper understanding of a lot of stuff. So, you know, not, not to toot my own horn, but I have a deep understanding. So I tried not to, uh, I tried not to judge, right? Because I kind of understand. I understand the whys of a lot of stuff. I understand why we make the moves we make. People are taking the fact that black folks are just trying to mind their business and stay alive and not stand out as this endorsement in the greater American project when it's not. Conserving things as the way they are in this country has never been our intention. We're just trying not to get killed. That's why I know what I'm seeing is it, y'all capitulating to bullying. Y'all scared, you know what I'm saying? You Negroes are scared. Y'all y'all don't really see no benefit in voting for Trump. But y'all think that if I do that and get around these white folks and, and, and talk like the exceptional black, that my life will be better. Nah. It's only so many rooms, you know, so many slots for the sellouts. There's no guarantee you're gonna get anything out of life by being that kind of black person, but 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 used and abused and kicked to the curb. I'm not doing it, bro. First of all, I actually love my own people. I love myself. And if you love yourself, you love your kind. So I will never sit here and do anything to go against my kind. Because to go against my kind is to go against myself. I don't hang around white folks. I don't have white friends. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I date women because I like women. So I've dated Asian women. I've dated the Buku, Latin women, you know, Mexicans, you know what I'm saying? Blacks, you know, whites. You know, I've dated women from all over the globe because I like women. But I don't hang around Mexicans, you know, just because I'm smashing a Mexican chick. I don't hang around Asians because I'm smashing an Asian chick. I'm around my own people because I like myself and I like my kind.